My name is Anton Van Dyck. Uh, I've spent a lot of time in the rebate side of, of what we do for, for Windows, um, communicate a lot with BC Hydro and Fortis BC on the programs that exist, and trying to really understand the intent of the rebates, um, why we have them, what the purpose is of them, um, and you know how we navigate around them. So uh, personally, um, interestingly enough, uh, about 10 years ago, maybe 12 years ago, I replaced Windows on my old house when there was the LiveSmart BC rebate program. And I just recently purchased another house, a 1970s, mid 70s home and did the windows on that home as well and, and uh, qualified for the rebates as well. So I've personally been through the rebate application myself. And um, so kind of sharing you a bit of my experiences that I've gone through and, uh, and go from there. So we will, let me just get this working. There we go. So with the rebates that we have, offer to us right now, what's important to note is where they come from. Um, some people assume that the rebates are coming from the industries. Uh, some people think they come from the government, some from the utilities. Uh, the reality is, is right now there's a group of organizations all working together. Um, there's the province of British Columbia through an initiative called Clean BC. There's the federal government um, working through what's called Enercan. And then there's the utilities, BC Hydro and Fortis BC. And really what's happened is all of these organizations have come together to create this program called Better Homes BC. And this is the link to the website below. And so in there, if you go to this website, you're gonna see a whole laundry list of things that rebates are applied to, insulation in your attic, crawl space, walls, heating systems, hot water tanks. And what we're gonna talk about today is windows and doors and, and how uh, you can apply rebates to windows and doors for, for your project or for your home. And so, it's, it's broken down into, I don't wanna, um, you know, just a bit of a comical thing here. This is government programs. So governments have a really good way of complicating um, processes and programs. And, and um, I kind of wanna put windows into a category of a car, for example. Um, you know, how complex it can be to purchase a car nowadays based on the options that, that exist. And, and a window, if you go back 15, 20 years was glass and a frame. And, and now a window is treated more like, like a car based on fuel consumption. So every car is going to have a different level of fuel consumption. And the way the rebates are applied to is based on the performance output of a window. It's either going to qualify for a $50 rebate per window or a $100 rebate per window, depending on which product you select. Not all windows will get rebates. And so it's important. And we're going to go through why some do and some don't uh, and how we go about that application process. And so it's important to, to start to break down these tier one, tier one, tier two windows. You're going to see these things come up in, in, in the terminology through the rebate application, through the correspondence with the utilities. And what's important to note is the tier one, tier two is a way of simplifying the thermal performance aspect of a window. And so to, to, to understand a little bit of that and where that comes from is it really comes from the building code. And the building code sets minimum parameters on windows that are allowed to be used in British Columbia. And so this, this targets the window at this sort of performance metrics, this number of performance. It's kind of like if you think of your car, it's got a miles per gallon or liters per hundred kilometers fuel consumption kind of um, status applied to it. And so some cars will perform better. And so the, the province of British Columbia minimum criteria is this number 1.8 might not mean a, mean a lot to people, um, but if you're into construction, you're gonna to start to understand what that is. It's about the thermal conductive aspect of the window. And so the lower the conductive rate of the window, the lower the number, the better the performance. So as the number gets smaller, City of Vancouver, for example, its minimum requirement is 1.4. So it has a higher performance requirement than the province. And that's because the City of Vancouver is trying to do more initiatives to be more sustainable, more energy efficient. So it's, it's pushing people further along to, to put more energy efficient product into their new homes. Um, and then when we look at the tier one, tier two, so the $50 rebate and the $100 rebate, it breaks it down into these performance categories. So a 1.4 U value to 1.23 range is a tier one, and then 1.22 and lower. So remember the smaller the number, the higher the performance, we'll get a $100 rebate. What you can see here is code minimum product, the 1.8 doesn't qualify for a rebate. And that's important to note, you don't simply get a rebate for replacing your windows. 
you get a rebate for placing replacing your windows for better than code windows. So the mandate that's been put forward by the government through legislation is that rebates can only apply. So government rebates, government incentives can only apply to the installation or the replacement of, of old product and the installation of new product, but that new product has to be better than code. It's, it's similar to how there's a rebate for buying an electric car. You don't get a rebate for just buying a new car. Um, so some people are frustrated by that saying we should just get a rebate for upgrading our home because our home is inefficient. Um, but unfortunately, that's the rules. That's the line in the sand and there's not much we can do, do around that. So there's also some confusion about, you know, what type of buildings the rebates can apply to. And, and this can get really confusing. Um, and if what I would encourage everybody to do is when you click on the Better Homes BC website, it'll take you to the terms and conditions. They're not long, it's maybe a page full, it's in, it's in big print, not fine print, but it'll tell you what applies and what doesn't apply. Uh, for example, condominiums, you know, three, four, five, six story buildings, they don't apply, uh, unfortunately. Um, because there's not a sufficient amount of windows per wall area, so they basically emitted it. However, if you live in a townhome or a row home that has the same unit stacked on top of itself, it would apply. Um, and it's just the nature of how they've written the rules for how to apply rebates. Now, if you're in a condo, there is a way you can apply for the whole building, uh, but it takes an energy advisor to do a whole building assessment. You don't get it per unit. You could potentially get something per building, but it doesn't fall into the same category as the $1,500 um, aspect, of it, aspect of it. So what we're going to talk about a lot today for the most part is how the rebates will apply to single family. Um, but if you are in a multifamily building and you want to have some conversations, this is probably um, a separate conversation we can have offline. So. Um, if that is you and you're on this, just feel free to um, drop your information and we can be in touch with you. So, so this thermal image is trying to give you an example of what different performance outputs look, looks in Windows. So this is five different windows with five different types of glass and five different performance metrics. Uh, when I talked to you, when I mentioned about the U values of Windows, it's important to understand that a window of a certain performance metric is going to perform differently. And it's very hard to see performance. You can't really see heat flow naturally with the human eye. So this is it under infrared. And so that was about a 20 minute time lapse all in about 30 seconds. And there's a heat lamp behind every piece of glass you see here. And as the heat lamp, basically chicken coop heat, heat lamps, as they heat up the area behind that heat wants to flow through the glass. And so what you see here on the left, this red piece of glass, this is a, a window that you would typically find in a home from the year late 90s, maybe early 2000s and older. So almost every existing home that you would find in the marketplace that is less than 20 or more than 20 years old. And then code minimum glass kind of fits into these three categories in the middle. Um, you can get that U1.8 code minimum and you can see here Code minimum in some cases is not that much better than old technology windows. Um, and this is predominantly the one right smack in the middle is, is if you buy it, bought a new home today, you most likely have this glass in it. Um, but the glass that qualifies for the rebates is this one. And so what's important here is people might say, well, I don't really wanna put the higher end product and it's not necessarily higher end, it's higher performance. Um, and so we all want to pay less for gas for our car. So we generally want to buy a car that consumes less gas. We all want to pay less to heat our home. So we want products in our home that, you know, re re results in lower heating bills. And so it's really not about the high end product. It's about the product that performs well. And it's really important to note that you see here, this is a horizontal shelf. The heat coming through, think about the summertime, the heat coming through your glass, hitting your floor, heating your house up, making your house too hot. That's heat flow coming in overheating your home. Whereas here you don't have that heat flow coming in overheating your home. So the a bit of an added benefit to installing product like this is you get the rebates which help offset the cost for heating your home in the winter, but you increase the comfort of your home as well in the summertime. So this is sort of seeing the difference. And so when you're what you're going to see here is for the most part, the windows we're going to be applying for for the rebates are going to be windows with this level of performance in it. And so there's two systems now. There's been an added step that we have to pay attention to when it comes to rebates. And this is a really cool aspect. 
and, and I've broken it down into three basically categories or three paths to go. The first step you want to look at right now, so from October 1st to December 31st, Clean BC, BC Hydro, and Fortis BC, whether you go to any one of these links, if you simply just Google um, Better Homes, Clean BC, BC Hydro, Fortis, and promo code, it's going to take you to one of these links. It's that simple. And it'll take you to this promotion code registration. And what's happened is as a result of COVID-19 and economic kind of downturns is the federal government and provincial governments have said, we have some funding that we want to put into the industry to help stimulate jobs, create some buzz, get things going, put people back to work. And so you have this, this um, promotion code aspect, this limited time double up rebate offer that if you register for a promotion code between now and December 31st, you don't have to plan to do anything, just register for the promo code, get your code, I'm actually planning to do insulation in my home. So I actually got my code, they email it to you. I don't know if you can see it, they email it to you. And now you can decide when you wanna do the work. Um, but this is very, very important that you apply for it. You put in your information and they set you all up for it. And you can see here for windows, I showed you earlier that tier one or sorry, tier two window, which was $100 per window is now for a limited time offer is $200 per window. And I'll show you how significant this increase can be in some homes, um, depending on the windows that you purchase. Um, what's important, like I said, apply before December 31st. If you apply on January 1st, you will not get the double up promo. Um, and so you will miss out. So please, 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 right after this, Google it and go apply for your promo code. So at least you have it and then you're done. So once you have your promo code, the important part is that you have to have product installed and a final invoice before March 31st. Um, what these promo codes like to do is ramp up demand for doing work very quickly. And so what'll happen is it, you can only get so much work done in a certain time. And so getting into the queue, the sooner you can, the better you can, because as we get into the spring, um, home renovation projects typically pick up in, in society people get ready to go. Um, the cool part is, is we can do home renovations and window replacements any time of the year. Typically a window will be removed for maybe half an hour, maximum of an hour, especially in the winter time. So there's really no seasonality aspect to it, but in order to get that double up promo, you have to have the product installed by, by March 31st. It is a, a mandatory requirement for this promotion to, to work. So, once you have your installation completed, so let's fast forward, you've decided to move forward, you've got your promo code, um, you've signed a contract uh, with a window installation manufacturer and installer, and they've done the installation, everything's good, you've gotten your final invoices, and the key is, is you can only do this once the project is 100% complete. You can go to this BC Hydro website, this, this is another link, um, like I said, don't always make it an easy path to follow or to find, um, hence why we're having to do sort of the webinar on this. Um, but what we will do is when you purchase windows from us at the very end of the project, you're going to get an email from us with your final invoice that is going to be in PDF form that you're going to use for this application, but it will also include the links and a step-by-step -step instruction on how to apply for the rebates. Um, if, it at all, if it's at all confusing, um, your uh, representative who is working with you will help you out. We've had people come back to our showroom um, and we've done the application for them. We've been trying to figure out how we can do the application for people because we can do it in about two to three minutes. Um, however, there's privacy issues. And so we can't actually do the application for you. We can help you do it, but we can't physically do it for you. It's just the regulation that they put forward. So you'll have a link given to you click on that link, it'll take you to this page and there's this big green button, apply now for your rebates. So you click there and you, and you go to basically the first page. And so now they're gonna start sort of asking you for some information. Um, it may not be applicable to the work you did, but they're also trying to get data on the energy efficiency levels of certain types of things in homes throughout the province. And this is allowing the, the government to, redetermine kind of how do we stimulate 
the home renovation, energy renovation industry in British Columbia to make our existing homes more energy efficient so we don't have to constantly upgrade our infrastructure and ultimately homes just use less, more, less energy. So you identify your electric provider, hydro, fill out your account number, um, Fortis BC, Fortis, Fortis BC for your gas and basically just fill out the information as you go. A um, bit of information about who you are, your name, phone number, so they can contact you. Um, so this is where you sort of get into the type of home. And I saw a little question pop up about, you know, what about apartments? What about condos? Um, so the rebates for windows, unfortunately, do not apply to apartments and condos. Um, there is a rebate for whole condominium complex upgrades, but it's more on a project scale, not on an individual unit scale. Um, and that's kind of done on purpose because there's a huge opportunity for strata councils to get together to do their whole complex um, where you might be looking at a cladding replacement with windows or something with your roofing or a boiler upgrade. Um, and those things work in, in um, house as a system kind of approach. And so it's important to look at apartments and condos at a very, very different pre-plan, pre-design, design build approach. But for um, window rebates in general, single family, row homes, duplexes, and mobile homes um, on permanent foundations, that's a very important um, aspect to look at. They will not uh, apply to mobile homes that are not on permanent foundations. And so um, they're gonna look for the year of the home, how, the occupants, that type of thing. So then you start getting into identifying the upgrades that go into the window or into the home. Um, there's a real emphasis on heating, uh, which you'll find if you've seen a lot of the advertisements that have been on television about rebates, it's very focused on heating uh, and hot water and um, natural gas reduction. And so there's a real push to get your heating system upgraded. But what we like to talk about in our industry is the focus of the envelope, the outer skin of the home. Um, should be more of a priority than the heating system. It's kind of like putting a sweater on your home before you actually turn the heat up. If you want to save energy, the key is to really um, focus on, uh, on, on the ability of using less heat in your home versus just upgrading the furnace to be more efficient. So in some cases, you can upgrade the envelope of your home and your furnace now doesn't have to be as big. You can downsize certain things uh, and get more efficiency by upgrading the windows or the insulation in the walls. So you'd identify a bit of, um, have you done as part of your upgrades, the heating system, in this case, no. The water heating system, no. And if you did, you would click yes and provide some additional information. So once you get past all that, it's a bit of, um, you know, typically it's, I like to call it no different than applying for a passport. You're basically just filling out information into automated cells. Uh, if you miss a cell, it won't let you go until you have the information, but it's all information that you have. Um, so you have here some categories you can now pick on uh, insulation, windows and doors, space heating, hot water. Click the little cell here, go to next when you're into windows. And now it gets complex. Um, nothing easy about this. This is typically where we step in and help a lot of people out. I'm trying to uh, convince the um, utilities to allow us to do this where we can be sent a link and we could populate this for people but I'm going to show you how to do it right now it's it's once you know where to find the information it's pretty simple uh, but it's technical data so if you're not a numbers person it's hard if you are a numbers person it's easy but we try to put it into layman's terms so we have an invoice date got to put that information in there we do the windows the make central windows once you start typing CEN, it'll populate. Central Windows is already pre-entered into the system. You enter it up here. It also puts all the GST numbers. The address were already built into and pre-added into their system. So there's not, you don't have to add all that data. Uh, model number. So this is the series number. Um, so think of this as I bought a car. I bought a, um, I don't know, a BMW 3 Series. Think of it from that perspective. Um, so you have Central Windows 6855 model number. The U value of the window that you're putting in, this is the technical performance number that the window meets. This will be on a label. This will be on, I'll show you where this is in a second. And then the total number of units installed that fit into this category. So just taking this information here, center windows, 6855, the U value of 1.22 and the quantity of 12. What you're going to get at the end of the project is you're going to get emailed this document. This is our paid in full invoice. 
Now, here's, here's the mistake a lot of people will make. They'll try to apply for the rebate before they've received their paid in full invoice. You will not make it all the way through to this step if you do not have this document. Um, so you may get confirmation paperwork at the start of a project that looks similar to this, but until BC Hydro and Fortis will not process anything until they've received confirmation that you've paid in full for the work that needed to be done. Um, so that's an important step to remember. But what we do here is we, we provide the data that you need to put into those cells. And there's also additional data in here that BC Hydro and Fortis will use to audit if they want to, to determine whether or not um, properly registered products. So this is Enercan. So this is the federal window registration code. So all of our windows, in order for them to be sold in Canada and British Columbia, would get this registration number that is almost like a serial number that anybody can go online actually and search and look up and you can identify to this, this digit compared to the data that's registered with the government. It's, it's a bit of red tape, but it's because energy efficiency is so important to our, our society um, that in order to eliminate fraud, you have to go through this registration process as a manufacturer and installation company so that um, you're legitimized basically in the industry and someone can do an inspection from time to time in our facility and validate does this product you say actually meet this number and so this is this just blown up and so i showed you the first one was the model number 6855 the u factor 1.22 the quantity installed was 12. so backing up to that one that all makes sense it links in there so once you fill out the first one there's a button here add more because obviously there's three more lines and I go to the second one 6855 U factor 1.37 and a quantity of three click the green button again takes me to the next line same thing there's another line click the green button takes me to the next line now I filled out all four items into the system I'm done with that so this is the technical data where most people get hung up on uh, we've tried to really simplify it um, as much as we possibly can. It's not important that the numbers mean anything to you. Um, they mean something to us. They mean something to the people on the back end that are reviewing things. Um, but the key is, is that you identify the U factor and the quantity that are being installed. And here's where it gets to be a little bit of fun. So you've entered in the data. It's calculated everything based on the rebate without the double up promo. So let's say you failed to register for the double up promo. You're for those 12 windows that we put in that were tier two, based on the U value you put in, those first 12 windows, they all qualify for a hundred dollar rebate. The other ones were tier one, they qualify for a $50 rebate. And so adding that all up, you get to $1,600. Now, if you've applied for the promo, the rebate promo, this number, this 12 windows that are tier two, these go to $200. Um, that simple, double up from 100 to 200. Um, the eight remain at 50, but you can see here the difference very quickly. Um, this contract here, for example, was 16,000. So the original rebate represents about 10% of the original contract value, but now you've basically increased it to $2,800 for that rebate that's you know going and being applied to that $16,000 window order that was done. So. Um, a rather significant rebate um, is available for windows that are done that qualify. Um, as you go through, the next step is a little bit tricky. Um, some people have done this, so it's easy for them. Some people have never done this before, um, but you do have to upload some supporting files. So a lot of this program requires um, a level of trust. Um, on people's end, there is an auditing capability and, and there is the opportunity for people to come to your home and do an inspection to validate whether or not you did put in the proper product. Um, but you have to upload files and it's two simple files. One is the paid in full invoice that we email to you in PDF form. So what you do is you save that to your file and the other one is a photo of a label. And window labeling, temporary window labeling is a requirement that has to be done in new construction, every window gets a label, building inspectors see the label, and then they check off that the windows meet code. Um, in retrofit though, they want us to have labels on the windows, but the challenge is, is when we install windows, you don't want labels all over your windows when we leave the home. 
um, because then you have to clean the, the glue and the residue off and, and it's not a fun thing to do. So what we've done, and we've confirmed this to be an acceptable practice with um, the utilities, is we provide the labels for the windows in an envelope um, at the completion of the project for you. And what this allows you to do is take a label out, hold it up to the glass, and take a photo of it. Um, and so when you go to the upload aspect, what you're going to do is you're going to upload the paid and full invoice, and you're going to upload that photo of that one label. Um, you don't have to do them all. If you wanted to do them all, you could. Um, I personally, when I did the rebate application myself, I took a photo of one label and uploaded it, and that's all they're looking for. And if they feel that something may not be correct, they may call you, they may want to take a look. And what, so what you'll see here is this label is in reference to the 6855, the U value 1.3. So that one is in reference to this item number two that's on here. Um, so they, they link up the label to the data that we have on this invoice. So they're all playing a role in there. And so what I've done here is just an example of, I saved these file numbers, the photo of the label and the invoice into just a folder on my desktop called rebate content. I click the upload, I find it, I select these two items, it dumps them into the program and then we're done. So um, whether or not you need to add additional information, I, I don't know what that is, but um, there is an opportunity to do that too. So I find this to be in an odd spot, but it is. Um, I missed it the first time I went through this and which kind of had me scratching my head. Um, but when you get to the very end or step four, you're gonna see this thing about bonuses and special offers. And so the first one here is the special offer, this promotion code. This is done at this stage. Do not forget to tick this box. Um, if you don't tick this box, you won't get your promotion. You won't get the double up and your check will be smaller that you receive in the mail. Um, so if you tick this box and you've applied for your promotion code, it'll allow you to enter in that promo promotion code, which will then automatically increase your, your rebate um, for, for your windows. Um, so please, please, please don't skip that step. If you do, let us know. Um, we do have the ability to communicate to the utilities directly um, to help uh, deal with it. There's also um, an Energy Coach hotline on their website that will allow you to call them up and say, unfortunately, I forgot to enter in my promo code. Can we please apply it? They do. There is somebody on the back end, an actual real person that reviews every application that goes through. So there is a, a, a rather human element to this process. Now the bonuses is kind of cool. If you're really into upgrading your home and you want to do the windows and let's say the insulation at the same time or within a six month or I think you can do it within a year period right now. Um, if you did two upgrades, you can get a bonus of $300. So there will be a, a, a rebate for doing your windows. There'll be a rebate for doing insulation. And then just tick the box and you get a bonus of $300. Um, so if you're planning to do multiple ones, I'd recommend you kind of plan around them within the same vicinity in the same time. Um, if you did your windows you know, a little while ago and you got your rebate and now you're doing your insulation, I would um, go down this process and tick it and then if there is a glitch in the system, get on the phone with them and talk to them and explain it. They do listen. They're a very um, uh, uh, passionate group about energy efficiency and want people to do things well and do things right. And so when you take these extra steps in, in your home to, to do it, um, they're there to really help. And then there's actually a third bonus. And if you click through here, if you get an EnerGuide home evaluation done, um, there's a bit of cost to this, but somebody can come to your house. They do what's called a blower door test. They test the amount of air leaking into your home from outside and how much warm air is leaking outside. Uh, they determine the levels of insulation and other things in your home. And this is all done prior to doing any work. Um, so there's a small cost to have that person come in and do it. But the bonus can be up to $2,000. I think right here it shows $2,000 for doing um, the home, the EnerGuide home evaluation plus three upgrades. So if you did your heating system, your insulation and your windows, you can get an additional um, uh, rebate as well on your home. So there's a huge uh, opportunity uh, to do more, more and more uh, energy upgrades on your home through these rebate programs. So, and with uh, you know interest rates being at an all-time low, the energy savings that you might uh, may incur might actually um, offset uh, the interest on on a loan to do that work. So something to consider. 
So then getting towards the end here, you get to pick how you want to receive your rebate. You can apply it to your, your bill. Um, when I did mine, I just asked for a check. I did mine right at the very, very beginning of the program. I got my check within like a week and a half. Um, I think now it's a little bit longer, probably up to a month, maybe a month and a half. Um, but the checks do come and uh, they are nice to receive. And so you can determine how you want to receive it. You'll get a summary of everything that you put through and submit. And I do have to admit, um, the system isn't, I caught it just before this presentation, but I failed to put in my promo code um, as I was putting this together. So if I had put in the promotion code, you would have seen this 1600 turn into 2800. Um, so I'd have to go back now through the system and redo it because I missed that promotion code. Um, so it's really important that you follow the steps through all the way through the system uh, in order to do it. Um, not always sort of um, straightforward, but uh, like I said, if you've applied for uh, a passport online, um, typically you can apply for a rebate online. So um, yeah, and so that's it for the presentation, sort of um, a simple way of looking at it, but uh, I guess we will open the floor. I will stop sharing my screen and uh, bring Renell back and we can open the floor to questions and um, go from there. Thanks, Anton. Yeah, uh, thanks for the presentation there. And we hope once again that uh, your presentation was, was able to answer quite a few questions. But with that being said, we do have quite a few questions uh, for Anton right now. Anton, probably some of which you've already adjust, addressed during the presentation, but we do want to repeat those questions just in case uh, anyone gets a better understanding of it. We'll start off with the very first question on top of the chat room here, which you addressed also recently, but multifamily properties are not eligible for rebates once again? Uh, yes and no. Uh, multifamily, like row homes and townhomes, um, they are. Uh, the the condominiums ones like so typically what i say is that if, if it's a unit stacked on top of its own unit it's okay if it's a unit stacked on top of another unit it's not okay um so row homes and townhomes yes condominiums and apartments that are multi-story no um what i would encourage you to do if you have any doubt before you do any work is to give the home energy coach call um give them a call and they will help guide you through that that process um, where I've seen a few people make mistakes is on condos is they bought the windows without sort of doing the due or they've done upgrades in their condo and then they apply for the rebates only to find out later on that they're rejected. Um, condos, condos are more in the world of commercial institutional categories. So there's, there's a different program available through the utilities to deal with those types of buildings. And I would encourage if you live in a building like that to talk to your property manager who might be able to set up a conversation with uh, a representative. Um, if, for example, you're on a boiler system in your condo, a central heating boiler system, you're likely on natural gas. So you'd probably have a Fortis BC representative who would be able to help you and guide you through what uh, rebate options are available for your building if you did work, um, that type of thing. Um, and if you're on electric baseboard heating, which a lot of row homes and townhouses can be, you can have that, that uh, application is done as well. So um, but yeah, single family duplex mobile homes on permanent foundations are part of the program, but not condominiums. And this kind of complements the question here from Sandy or word for word she had asked, as duplexes are actually registered in land titles as a strata, can you confirm duplexes operating systems are as separate homes, no formal strata is ever formed, so they would indeed qualify for those rebates. Yeah, so it's not about being a strata or not. It's about the building classification. So you could be in a strata and you can be a row home of, of eight units and you would, your row home would, your individual unit would qualify regardless of what other people do or do not do in the complex. Perfect. Uh, question here from Kristen. Kristen has a sliding patio door that is in pretty rough shape uh, with a substantial amount of heat loss, of course. If Centra were to replace that sliding patio door, would that be government grant eligible? Yeah, so there's a bit of a communication mix up, I think, in the program. Um, there's <laughs> patio doors are classified in the industry as a window, not a door, um, just the nature of how it goes. And then there's the classification of a swing door or an entry door. So swing doors and entry doors um, only qualify for a tier two rebate, whereas a patio door is classified as a window and it would qualify for either a $50 or up to the $100 rebate. Most patio doors based on their performance would, would achieve a $50 rebate. Um, 
there has been some confusion in the past with people in certain parts of the program that are not privy to the terminology used in the window and door industry, but a patio door is considered a window and does qualify for a rebate. If you find that your patio door is not approved, uh, this is a separate conversation that I would have. Um, let us know. Um, we've had conversations with the utilities about, nope, it's a patio door, not a swing door. Um, and that should clear things up. So not a perfect. We actually have, um, go ahead, Anton. I said it's not a perfect um, process, but uh, the good news is, is there's some back channels to have that we can do to work around them. So, yeah, for sure. Exactly. Uh, a question here, speaking about the process, uh, their installation was completed on October 2nd. So just a few weeks ago, uh, but they did not receive their window labels. How can they go about uh, receiving those window labels? Would they have to contact us uh, directly to apply for that promo code? So so if you've had your you had the installation was done on October. So if you don't have the labels, um, you need the labels in order to uh, to get the rebate. So I would respond to you would have received an email from from our um, at the completion with your final invoice. So what I would do is I would respond to that email with um, the request for the envelope of labels. Um, okay. That's an error on our end. We would make sure that those get rushed out to you right away. So we would deliver those to you. Um, and we'll, and so then you can take a photo of that label uh, and then you can apply for the rebate. Um, now you can, if you've had your windows installed already, you can technically go and apply for the promo code and then apply for the, for the rebates. Um, because the promo code, it's, it's really a matter of just having your product installed by March 31st in order to fully qualify for the promo code. But um, anybody who has had their windows done, who had, who had intended to apply for a rebate, um, go before you do the rebate, apply for the promo code. Um, there's really not a lot of information you need to submit for the promo code, just your account numbers from Fortis and Hydro, from BC Hydro. And um, that'll give you the promo code and then, uh, and then you can apply for the rebate. But if you're missing information, let us know right away and we'll take care of that for you. Another question here that very complements your answer just, uh, just there. Do they apply for the double up promo code before the windows are installed? And I guess based off your answer there, they're able to do that. Apply for the promo code before you apply for the rebates. That's the key. Um, so, so anybody who's had windows installed that has not applied for the rebates yet, do the promo code first and then do the rebate application. All right, perfect. We hope uh, there was uh, that answer there was able to answer some of those questions there that were received in the Q&A chat here. Another question in the chat room, um, as you mentioned, only one label is okay to upload. They do not have to label or upload one per window per se. Correct. Um, what I would do is uh, there is a person who does auditing, um, one person for the province, I believe. So you know, there's not a lot of auditing, but there has been from time to time where somebody will come potentially to the home and want to check to make sure that what you said you did, you actually did. Because um, there could potentially, there's a potential for fraud in this. And there's, um, so there is that back check. And we have come across a few times where there has been some questions about, um, you know, where are the labels? Can we see the labels? And so if you throw the labels out, the envelope of labels out uh, within the audit period, and I don't believe there's a time frame in the audit period, um, but what I would do is hang on to them for a few months, maybe even a year, staple them to the paid and full on, um, invoice and just file them away. Um, anytime you get money from the government, from a tax return, you know how they say, I think they can come after you within seven years. I don't know if that applies to this program, but keep the backup uh, information. I have not run into a situation where there's been a rejection of a single photo of a label. Um, so usually I would just recommend doing a single photo of one label and keeping the other labels on file just in case somebody wants to do an audit. Now, if someone had installed Windows last year, could they still get those rebates? Do they still become eligible for those rebates? So if you purchased rebate qualifying Windows, um, so what, what happened, the frustrating part about government programs is we don't usually find out about them up until the day before. So for example, the promo code we were notified as of September 31st, um, and they came in effect October 1st. And so if you had purchased Windows prior to the rebate program even being, being in place, um, there's nothing you can do. You just missed the boat on that aspect. The other part is, is when you did the Windows 
just because you put windows in doesn't mean you automatically qualify for the rebate. You have to have the better than code windows. So if you're questioning that, the first thing would be to do is look at the invoice that you received and didn't have the summary information data. Um, because if it doesn't have that, then the chances of the windows qualifying for the rebate, um, they may not occur. Um, if you had any other questions, what I would do is get in contact with the sales representative who you dealt with and said, hey, you know, can we verify the product that I have? Um, is there any chance that it could qualify? Um, there will be some, the, the red tape gets a little bit tricky in regards to the dates on the invoice and whether or not it fell within the rebate period that it existed. So there's a little bit of back checking you'd have to do. Um, the first step I always recommend to people is Go to that Better Better Homes BC website, and you know, like I said, it's only about a page worth of terms and reference. They're not fine print; they're pretty, they're big text, um, and it's pretty easy to sort of uh, double check through on that one. So, uh, question here from Sandy: Are there a list of qualified window vendors that homeowners have to use to get these rebates? No, there's not. Um, you can technically use anybody you want. Um, Insulation, there is. I found that out the hard way. Um, to get the, pro, the, the promo code for insulation, you need to use a selected list. They're trying to, the program is designing, is designed to create more contractor registration aspects to it, to create, um, to get rid of a little bit of what we like to call truck and ladder. Um, you know, the person who has a full time job, but then is a window retrofitter on their side. The common complaint we'll hear from a lot of people is a lot of companies don't talk about rebates because you need to control the documentation. Some window installers buy product from a manufacturer. They don't actually make the product. And so the invoice that comes with the technical data that I showed you would come from the manufacturer, but and the labels would come from the manufacturer, but the actual installer has to also create content um, information that allows for the rebate to go through. Um, so because there's a lot of red tape, a lot of people, a lot of contractors don't like dealing with it. So they won't even bring up the rebates. And I had this when I was doing insulation in my home, um, three out of the four contractors that I, I met with didn't even mention rebates being available. And I actually had to show one contractor the website to see what he was missing. Um, but then the invoice I get from them doesn't contain the data that I need in order to qualify for the rebate. So now I'm being a pain to him asking him for new invoices that are custom because they don't meet the criteria for BC Hydro and Fortis. And so it's important that you recognize up front that is this installer or manufacturer going to be able to provide me with the documentation that the utilities need in order to apply for the rebate. Um, because if you're gonna to struggle to get that documentation, you're, you're gonna be rejected on that rebate, even if you have rebate qualifying product. Yeah, it's really uh, really important to differentiate between the two there, as Anton just mentioned. Uh, we do have a mention about a uh, question about our glass. Uh, we had a couple of questions about it. The first initial question was, what type of glass do we use for the windows? And I think this complements the other question as well, where you spoke about Lowy 366 plus I-89. If you can explain the I-89 portion, which of course makes it eligible. Yes, yeah, so this is another hour conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so if you're really into window technical performance, so that thermal image that I showed you is um, that I spent a few minutes on. Uh, and this is something that I would really encourage if you want to learn more about. We spend time, we come to your home or you can come to our showroom. We actually have that display on, on, on hand and you can actually touch the glass and feel the difference in performance. But what that what those individual glass pieces had, every piece had except for the one that was really red, the one on the left had what was referred to as a low E coating. Um, and the low E coatings come in different types of levels, kind of like layers of paint. So there's a single coat, double coat, triple coat. And then there's um, a special one called the quad coat and it's a triple plus one. And that's the one that qualifies for the rebate. And the triple plus one is that plus one, that extra additional coat is what we refer to and Renell mentioned the term I-89. Um, kind of a very technical term, but it's an additional coating put on an additional surface that pushes, um, basically it's technology that was introduced about a decade ago that's become more mainstream now and cost effective as it became more popular. So it's very, very popular to use. And it basically took what you used to have to do with triple glazed windows, you can now do in a double glazed window with that glass technology. Um, so some people don't use it. They don't have access to it. They don't. They just can't get it. So they right away will go to triple glazed windows to qualify for the rebate. 
in a milder climate like the lower mainland and Vancouver and these regions and Victoria, you have to ask the question is, does a triple glazed window, is it necessary for how cold it actually gets here in the wintertime versus a place like Winnipeg? Mm -hmm. um, so the idea of that plus one coating or that I-89 coating is to reduce the cost of the window. So you're not having to pay for triple glazed windows that are not necessary. Get some of the highest performance double glazed windows in the market that will then qualify for the 50 and the 100 and plus $200 rebate. So for the most part, in order to get to that higher threshold, you have to have that full glass coating on a double window. And uh, for those that are more interested in this topic, as Anton has referenced, there are the glass display. We have a video available on that as well. So that's in the chat room right now, where one of our window experts goes through the variety of glass coatings that Anton was just referencing. So uh, that video should assist with a few more of uh, your questions. Another question here, would you enter a patio door as a window? Yes, <laughs> that's, that's a great question actually, because now I'm thinking about the application process. Um, and it may be something we have to clarify in our paperwork in the invoice that we identify it as a, um, but that's where I think the confusion is coming in is a door is a swing door, a patio door is a window. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, I think that's a good, that's a good question to ask. And it's probably something we need to clarify a little bit more in the paperwork. So I'm going to work on improving that based on that comment. And that's probably a bit of where some of the, comp the confusion is coming from between the window and door industry and the utilities that are approving the rebates. So, a uh, question here from Rudy back to the Strata question here. So, does the Strata make then the application and receive the rebate if the single homes and duplexes are eligible? So, the way it works, um, the rate, so typically the rate payer has is the one applying. So, you're applying based on your utility number, your account number, whether it be Fortis and BC Hydro. So if the strata is paying, so if you're doing one as a group, so most row homes are individually metered. So each owner, each each um, rate payer would, would apply for their own rebate. If there's a centralized meter, that's where it gets really, really complex. And there's no way you can apply for the rebates using this. You've got to go through the proper channels through your basically commercial division of Fortis BC. Um, and that's where I would, I would before you do any work, I'd have a conversation if you are a strata rate payer, like a centralized boiler, for, for example, um, that's where you wanna be, be very, very careful how you approach it. Um, now, if, you, if you're a renter or you have renters and you own the home and the renter is paying the heating bill, they're technically the rate payer. So there's actually a waiver form you can download when you're in that link that allows the rate payer, the renter, to, to give authorization to the homeowner who's paying for the windows um, to get the rebate, not the renter. Um, so there's that approach that goes with it too. And that's a very common one where the homeowner is wanting to pay for the upgrade but get the rebate, but the renter is going to get the benefit of lower energy bills. Um, and so there's actually a really net benefit there for, for uh, landlords to do this for renters. Um, we've actually seen programs throughout Europe where they're actually allowed to increase rent in Europe by law equal to the amount that the heating bill is reduced. And so there's incentive for landlords to upgrade buildings. Mm. Um, and it's something I've been trying to promote a lot in uh, British Columbia, but um, haven't gotten that far yet. So a couple of questions here from Marilyn in regards to the promo code, which of course you've addressed here before. Uh, they have a promo code for their windows. Do they need to now reapply for another promo code if they want to get some insulation complete? I don't believe so. Um, that's a good question. The, pro the program is so new. I don't know if that's been tested, but when you applied for your promo code, I think you tick boxes about what you're going to do. Um, you could call the energy coach to ask them if you need to reapply for it. I don't know what would happen if you applied for a second promotion code. Um, but that is something that I have not had to address yet. You may want to just re-enter in your data into that promotion code and see if it pops up that it says it already has an account and if you can update the account to tick the box with insulation as well. Um, but I would, uh, if it doesn't, I would assume that the promo code wouldn't matter, but be careful with that. That's not advice that's based on concrete evidence right now. So I would give a call to the, the energy coach and find out first. Okay, hopefully, uh, Marilyn, we were able to um, assist you with that question there. 
A uh, question here from Rudy, uh, more so along the installation side of things here. Uh, the central windows installed in a way that they can be tied into future um, exterior recladding, or can Centra include exterior recladding in its contract? Yeah, so in certain regions of the province, we do siding. Um, some of our roots of our company was doing residing of existing homes. Uh, depending on the siding that you want, we don't do all types. We don't do stucco, for example. Um, we don't do brick. We'll do hardy siding and vinyl siding. Um, so if you are getting quotes uh, from us, just uh, asking that of the um, representative who comes to your home that you're interested in doing siding. Uh, that's the first step. Second step, if, if you didn't do windows and siding together, letting the representative know that you intend to do the siding in the future, and we will definitely do everything we can to avoid having to duplicate work for the future. So we would do the window install that would allow for future tie-ins of new siding. We actually have a window um, that has a siding pocket um, J trim built right into it. It's a little bit and it just has this extra sort of step into it. So when you do the siding down the road, it, it allows you to eliminate some uh, caulking and high maintenance items that would go into a building. So um, it's definitely something to focus on for future planning um, and to be as open and transparent with who you're working with in selecting product to, to ensure that they know what you intend to do in the next, let's say two, five and 10 years with the home, so. Um, it's, it's a good, these are, those are fun, th fun projects to get involved with in regards to long-term planning and phase, phased approaches. So um, as homeowners are sort of deciding, you know, which installer they should go with, which company uh, they should be going with in regards to getting some of these rebates. Uh, if you want to speak a little bit about Centra offering an additional rebate on top of the government rebates, uh, that's something that's a couple of our attendees addressed here as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you would have seen it a bit if you saw some of our um, promotions that we, we put out. Um, one of the most simple ones that we do is um, a, a it's basically tied to the efficiency of doing more. Um, and I like to call it the Costco approach versus the 7-Eleven approach. If, if you need to pick up a jug of milk at 7-Eleven, uh, you're going to pay a, re a relatively high premium for that convenience of being able to stop at that store on your way home. Now, if you want to go through the lineup at Costco, on a Sunday morning and buy you know, five jugs of milk, you're gonna get them at a relatively lower cost per jug of milk or per gallon. And so the promotions that we really look at is the more you do, the more you save. Um, bottom line is if you do two windows in your home, it's gonna be, it's not as efficient for labor for us. We send out a crew, a whole truck, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just the nature of it. Um, in some cases, like, you know, if you did four windows, the volume and the savings that you can get in there sometimes will actually pay for the price of one window. Uh, now, if you did your whole house of 20 windows, you can actually save probably sometimes like the price of three or four windows. Um, so these are kind of uh, things that we work through with people. So when you see this sort of additional discounts that we'll offer uh, up, to, up to on windows, it's really going to depend on how many windows you choose to do at any given time. Um, and so with, with the rebate program and the promotions and things being limited time offer with interest rates being at a record low, um, the opportunity to do the whole home right now is a very, very prime uh, opportunity for people. Um, so if you have an issue with one or two windows in your home that you think we just got to deal with this because there's condensation and we just want to deal with the two windows, there are great deferral programs that allow you to spread out payments over time. Um, that allow you to reap the benefit of the energy savings by doing the whole home at once. You get the advantage of getting the Costco pricing for windows versus the 7-Eleven pricing for windows. You can get your entire rebate check all at once, the double up program. So there's a lot of things um, that are sort of creating an advantage to doing the whole home as one. Yeah, definitely a good way to look at it when you compare it to uh, just your local grocery stores and uh, local shops that you can purchase some daily items here. A question here from Barb, and this question I know was also addressed uh, a little bit earlier in the chat room as well, but uh, she's installing windows or already has in a new home. So does that make new builds also eligible for rebates or is there a difference there? No, the rebate only applies to the removal of an old window and the installation of a new window. If you have an old home and you want to cut a hole in a wall and put a new window in, that, that, that opening would not qualify for a rebate. Um, so it, it only applies to older homes, uh, or sorry, yeah. the replacement of older windows. Yeah. And it also, you also have to have a 12 month billing cycle 
uh, heating bill cycle in that home. So if you just moved into a home and you've been in there for two months, there will be a history of, of heat use in the home. So it would qualify, but if you just built a new home and you wanted to replace windows, they're gonna say no, because there's not a 12 month billing cycle. The program is designed really for people to get those 1960s, 70s, 1980s windows out and put in you know, better than 2020 code windows, like the future of windows, 2030 performance windows yeah. into your homes today. Uh, question here to follow up there, does the installation process matter when applying for a rebate? And I know it does. Does the installation? Yeah, can anyone install these windows or does it have oh. to be licensed? So the type of install doesn't matter. You can put in any window type that you want as long as it meets the performance. Yeah. It does require the windows to be supplied and installed. So if you bought the windows yourself and installed them, they are looking for a contractor who did the installation. Um, so they're looking for you to write down a contractor's name. It can get confusing um, because you could technically just put in you know, if you bought our windows, you could put in central windows. And I don't know if anybody can ever tell if you hired a contractor or not, um, but you got to be careful on the audit aspect of that as well. But it's, it's not designed for a do it yourself thing. The utilities want professional installations by professional contractors who are qualified and trained in the industry to do it a certain way. Um, based on, I don't know if you can see my screen, but there's, I have it right in front of me. I always keep it in front of me and it's, uh, you're probably not going to see it with my thing, but this is, oh, there you go. There we go. Practice for window and door replacement in wood frame buildings. So this is a document that was prepared by BC Housing in the province through the Window and Door Association in British Columbia that provides the guidance on how to do proper window replacement in our climate zone. And it's important to note the reality of where we are in leaky condos and that type of thing, that things are done properly and done with a trained professional. And then um, on top of that, just adding to it, um, asbestos is a really big, 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 big issue um, that we deal with every single day. I wouldn't say it's an issue, but it's something we deal with. And if you have a home from the 1980s and older, um, we always recommend that you talk to a professional who is, is qualified in the field of asbestos that knows what to look for, how to test for it. And if there is asbestos, knows how to remove it in a very safe way, because it's not just about protecting the homeowner. It's about protecting the occupants of the home as well. So it's something we we put a lot of emphasis in um, and take a lot of uh, care um, in doing that proper removal. So, Of course, and safety being one of our values there as well. So definitely a very important uh, topic to address. A uh, question here from another attendee who seems like they have just installed their windows in October 2020. So the questions are uh, very uh, recent here. Regarding the Accenture rebate program, would this apply for already completed projects specifically of this month? So the, the government rebate program, the rebates coming from the utilities would apply if you, if it was, if you purchased the rebate qualifying product. Um, as for the, if it's for the rebates that Centra applies to the product, um, those rebates, those, that, that rebate would be applied likely to your, like based on the volume of windows that you purchased um, from us. So that would, that would already would have been incorporated. Um, but it, as for the government rebates, definitely if you purchased qualifying product, um, I would go and apply for the rebate. So. Perfect. Uh, you addressed that comment in regards to uh, moving into the home recently. Um, one of our attendees here, Raymond, just moved into the home. So in regards to that 12 month history that you were referring to in regards to billing, do you think they can attain that from Hydro Fortis BC through just a simple phone call? I haven't come across an issue with that yet. So I believe if, and most of the time when people have problems with the rebates, I hear about it. Um, but I believe once you enter in the home address, um, your account may not match up to the billing cycle, but the home address would. And they have a way of calculating or looking up the home address and going, yeah, this home has been paying a hydro bill or a Fortis bill for 20 years even though I've only lived in it for two years. So um, every home by address through the utilities has a record. So I'm assuming they know that offhand just by doing the application. So, but the, right. the, um, energy coach, the energy coach hotline is something that you can, um, I've called the energy coach myself and asked them questions. They generally pick up right away. I've sent them emails. I usually get a response back in a day or two. If I don't, I'll follow up 
uh, with the same email just because it can, I think it's a one person or maybe two people. And so if they get backlogged, they might fall behind. So um, yeah. it's just something to be, uh, to, to be aware of. And uh, final question here that we'll be taking here from uh, Esther. Can they find uh, window performance metrics for Canada, specifically in BC, somewhere online? And do those promo codes and rebates apply just for BC? Or is it happening throughout the country? So every province, this one is funded. There's funding from the federal government. There is funding from the provincial government. The Better Homes BC website is run through the province, through the Ministry of Energy and the utilities in Fortis are in partnership. So this is a provincial based program only. Every province is running with their own program. Ontario has one. I just heard on the news yesterday that Saskatchewan, I believe, they have a home renovation tax credit. So a different type of program, but bottom line, the federal funding that's been coming through is being applied in different formats in different provinces. So this one is only British Columbia. Um, on that sample invoice that I showed you, there was this NRCAN number, the National Resource Canada, NRCAN, NR Canada. Um, if you go onto their website, it's basically the Energy Star website for Canada and mm -hmm. it allows you to go to the window and door section and search it up. Now, now the interesting part is, is since this rebate program started, Energy Star stepped its level up a level. Um, but the rebates still, they don't, because the rebates only used to apply to Energy Star product, but they actually saw the benefit of having just still high performance, not necessarily Energy Star products. So not all product is going to be on that website anymore yeah. because Energy Star has shifted, whereas the province has stayed a little bit more relaxed to the benefit. Um, so you're not having to pay as much for that upgrade cost for every window. You can still get good performing windows at a good cost. So not every product is going to be registered on that website. There is a way to find the archive data from every window company in Canada. It's a very, 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 very long list of all of the product SKUs that they manufacture that have been registered and certified through a certifying body, a certifying agency. Um, and so if you have the time, there is a search button um, and uh, you can look it up. <laughs> and I, if you're into that, I would encourage you to do it. If not, we can also provide you with um, summary information of test data reports on the thermal performance of every window that we sell, so. Perfect, uh, and to reference a little bit more of what Anton was referring to, if you take a look in the chat room, uh, we just recently posted a link uh, to one of our recent segments with CTV where Anton does go through some of the glass coatings and technology and does break down a little bit in terms of uh, what makes a specific type of glass eligible for government rebates. Um, that does it for our questions. Thank you so much for everyone who's attending. And Anton, thank you so much for uh, uh, fielding all of those questions here. Uh, for any more contact information, we've provided our um, email and our contact number, of course, uh, in the chat room as well. Our final slide here will have a QR code. So if you have your phone handy, you can scan that QR code. It'll take you right to our website and the blog post where it has a lot more details in regards to the government rebates available through Fortis and uh, BC Hydro. Anton, any uh, final comments on your end? Yeah, we're here to help. Um, I understand that these programs can be a challenge to, to navigate through. We have staff on hand that is here to help. I've done, I've done several actual applications for people with them on the phone. Um, we've had sales representatives go back to the home to help do the application. We've had people come to our showroom to help do the application. We can do all of these things with social distancing and masks on and, and that sort of thing. We want, we want the experience to be positive for everybody, um, keeping in mind that um, it is a, you know, it's, it's a government website and um, yeah. they're trying to make it better and better. And I'm trying to work with them to make it better and better. Um, we think this program the, the, the promo is is got a time stamp to it, but um, you know, as we go into the spring, uh, we'll see how the rebate program goes. They're all tied to funding. Um, so the reason why the promo has a cutoff date, and they've actually informed me because there's a certain dollar amount that they've set aside for the double up. And when they mm -hmm. feel that they're reaching the limits of that budget, they're going to turn it off. And so that's why there's a real limited time stamp to it. Um, the overall rebate program also has a budget and they've informed us that when they feel that they're getting to the end of it, if there's no government renewal commitment to refunding the program, 
Uh, once the funds run out, the funds run out and the program is done. So um, that's how they've always operated over the past uh, couple decades. And um, so these programs aren't here all the time and uh, they're here to be taken advantage of when they are around. So I would recommend uh, moving as quickly as you can.